Hello and welcome back to Wild Sun Art Studio. My name is Robinson. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you like this video. So last Monday, as you will remember, I was working on this kind of wild and crazy slow stitching. Um, the purpose of this was to make some, um, to print this out on paper and see what that would look like if I, um, you know, was going to put this in a journal. Like I could print something on this side too. Yeah, and that could be part of a signature. I tried writing on this with a Sharpie pen, actually, um, and you still can't read it very well, but I tried putting on some cards and tags, like what if that was a little side tuck and I could put a little card in there or, you know, add. So it takes tags pretty well. Oh, another thing I wanted to try was what would this look like with a paper cut on it? That still looks pretty noisy. Like it would be hard to discern that with your eye. Um, so another thing I tried was printing it, it just in black and white without color. Um, and you get lots of texture. You know, these light colored, they look white on this paper, is where the yellow is, and this dark is where the reds are. And of course, a paper cut would show up really well on this, as would, you know, any number of cards. What would a white card look like? on this page. Yeah, like what if that was the decoration and we had a little tuck going here. That would work out pretty well. Okay, so we're getting there with all these plans. The next thing I wanted to try was just a different color setup. So this is yellow, orange, and red. And I wanted to see what would happen if I worked on this in various shades of blue. And I like how this turned out. Um, another thing I tried on this one was doing rows of this herringbone stitch just straight across. Um, and I actually thought it looked sort of boring. So I ended up doing some of my lines of stitching to bring in sort of a wave action curve. Um, and I like that better. Um, I might still try one with just the, the straight lines across. There might be a way to copy it on my copier to to bring the color saturation down a whole lot. Um, there's a word for that. Uh, uh, Grayscale? I don't know. Something. Um, so I tried printing this off too, and clearly I was running out of blue toner, so that didn't work. But I just wanted to show you that that would work two as a paper and you know I could put tags on there. Mm, I don't know. We're still working on this. Um, I may end up putting this in some journals and that would be fun. So when I was thinking about putting it in journals, I, I hope you can see I did the outlines, what I did on the back, can you see 
um, there's sort of a pale blue line and then there are the little stitches. The pale blue line is made with this clover um, it's, a, it's a marking tool for fabric. On felt it doesn't brush away very well so I had to do this on the back and then I sewed just with a running stitch where I wanted this frame to be so that you can see that okay on the front where I'm going to be stitching and my little note to myself is messy feathers I thought I would do kind of what I did with the herringbone is have rows and rows of feather stitching. Now herringbone doesn't really have a right side up. You can um, take the stitching, I mean the overall picture, you can take the stitching and change direction and you can see on the overall picture, but the stitch itself doesn't have an obvious, it's a cross stitch, so it doesn't have an obvious top or bottom in the same way that a feather stitch does. And a feather stitch, I can do this for you, is, um, Kind of like that. So there's obviously this open part which I always see is kind of the top of the stitch and then this lower part of the of the curve of a stitch. Um, so that seems to me that there's a there's a right side up for a feather stitch. So I'm thinking about doing a messy feather stitch and I'll start in the middle and kind of come around and stop at the middle down here and maybe put a little wreath of some other kind of stitch, maybe, maybe French knots or even a running stitch or ooh, a buttonhole stitch. That might be cool. Write that down. Of, God, my handwriting is very messy. Of a uh, buttonhole. So, a wreath of buttonhole. You know, a, uh, let's see, buttonhole stitch goes like this. Uh, so, was thinking I could do a wreath of buttonhole. <laughs> yes. What I can do in stitch is um, this is in paper, so I mean in pencil. So I was hoping you can see that. So that might be cute to put a little wreath up there. I might do those stitches closer together so they look a little prettier. All right, so I thought we could just do a little stitching here for a minute. All right, this is about eight inches across here. Um, oh, by the way, I was thinking that I could print all of these embroideries are about printing for um, to make papers for a book. So this is what that page would look like. It would have the stitching and then you could write in your journal. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's the plan at the minute. Let's see if I can not turn this into a large, messy knot. So, if this empty space is about eight inches wide 
and I want to put a wreath here. I might want to give almost two inches to that. So I will just start right about there. Whoops. The goat, the goat. It is so cold today. I am in a turtleneck and a sweatshirt and I'm freezing. It's um, in the 40s. We've been having 70 degree weather. Every once in a while it gets up to 80 and now it's like 47 and it's blowing like bilio outside. I don't know. Weather in New England. They don't like it. Wait a minute. So this is a feather stitch. Like this. And I'm thinking that I'll do rows of feather stitches in uh, bunches of different colors of embroidery floss. And it'll be kind of messy, which is why I gave myself the note of messy feathers. My parents used to say, oh, when they were leaving the house, they would say, um, I'm off like a big bird in a windstorm. And I always had the greatest picture of what a big bird, you know, with big long feathers in a windstorm would look like, like <laughs> the poor bird's feathers would be kind of blown all crazy and askew. So I'm off like a big bird in a windstorm, sort of Mary Poppins like flying out the door with coattails flying. Yeah, something like that. So messy feathers, like running out the door with your coattails flying. And it doesn't look like that right now, of course, because I am sewing only the first row. But, but I think if I use all the many colors and kind of stack them on each other, and I might try making some of the stitches a little bigger, some a little smaller, some not well spaced. This one's, these stitches are being pretty uniform and spaced pretty in a pretty similar fashion, um, she says, making a crazy stitch. Uh, yeah, so we'll see what it looks like. Um, I hope I can show you next Monday um, what this looks like when I stack a whole bunch of feather stitches on top of each other. And um, Having this little wreath in the middle will be pretty cute. Actually, what I might do is stitch the wreath first. I mean, as soon as I finish with this, I'll come back and I'll do the wreath because maybe the wreath will be two inches wide or this is only an inch and a half. So maybe it, the wreath should be an inch and a half, in which case there would be a white space. Yeah, I should do the wreath first so I can plan whether or not I want white space around the wreath or not. So this is very good stormy weather activity. I mean, as long as I don't lose electricity power. I hope I'm staying in visible view, as opposed to invisible view, something like that. I'm 
going to turn the corner here and I've been going back and forth doing a stitch sort of to the right and then to the left and then to the right but in turning a corner I think I might be happier the stitch went off to the right and this stitch to the left I'm going to make a second stitch to the left to take up that corner space stitch to the right. <gasps> Some wonderful news this morning. Um, friends of our family um, or their family have a new baby. So that's very exciting. The June baby. the things when I'm sewing by myself and I'm not trying to make video um, I often think of using this time of quiet stitching uh, it's kind of prayer and meditation time so I am wishing this little baby a very happy life a strong and healthy life. I'm wishing the brand new parents, this is their first child, um, uh, I'm, I'm wishing them, I don't know, a lot of fun. Having children is an amazing project. Uh, brings up all kinds of stuff you never knew you didn't know and it gives us opportunities to work that stuff out which is kind of cool um, and you get to to see the magical qualities of little children I swear my kids used to talk to each other by tapping their foreheads, kind of Hawaiian style, um, together, and and they would communicate, tell each other stuff. I caught them doing that once, and I was like, oh, you really do know how to do that. That's incredible. So I think we all come here with all kinds of spiritual skills and it's very wonderful as a parent to just watch your kid and see what they know and uh, try to not tell them that that's not actually happened but but you know let them grow up in a spiritual world where they have those strengths so I'm getting to the end of how much time my phone gives me to make video these days. Um, so I need to tell you goodbye for now. And next Monday when I come back, you'll see this luscious frame. You know, you could also make a frame like this and either use this itself as the frame for a photograph in a um, picture frame 